Hey, Timoko, how are you? Fine, thank you. Hati, hi, how are you? Yeah, very good. Um, thanks so much for agreeing to be part of this uh, lockdown virtual series. It's like an honour to have you as part of our group. Um, I'm really loving the bicycles that are in the background there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they are uh, my husband's collection. I'm occupying the um, kind of reception room of the house for my remote uh, office. Um, I started to go back to studio, but it's just twice or three times a week. Um, I'm staying at home today. Oh, very good. Staying safe. That's good yeah. to hear. <laughs> um, do you want to just introduce yourself and explain like what your business is and what kind of work that you do? Okay, um, I'm Tomoko Azumi. I'm from Japan. Um, I'm living in this country for for how long? Twenty eight years by now. Started to to study in in the UK. Um, I originally studied architecture and then worked three years in Tokyo and came over and then took my second degree for uh, furniture design at Royal College. The um, uh, MA, that's I did my sort of change my direction slightly. Then after that, I started to do um, design um, exhibitions, furniture, uh, products, some shop interiors. Um, yeah, lightings and um, lots of other stuff. So um, my own practice, I started in 2005 in um, Hackney and then uh, with my team, I do carry on sort of, yeah, mainly interior design and furniture plus other um, field of design um, I do in practice. Brilliant. So that's, Brilliant. That's, how, how many people have you got working for you now then? How big um, it's shrunk by now. Um, the biggest time we were five, but at the moment I have only me and then one more main designer. And then um, in dance, sometimes a um, couple or, or normally one plus other means. So the biggest day is, is four. And then, yeah, I'm, I might be um, alone in the studio as well. So it's a kind of very flexible, small size. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm going to, I've got your website up, so I'll just share my screen and then we can mm -hmm. have a scroll through it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll go back to the top. Um, so yeah, these are just the projects on your website. I don't know if um, if I just sort of scroll down very slowly, if there's any that you particularly want to sort of talk about or? Um, the recent projects are um, in heavily in relation to paper, which um, is one here. from my childhood. And then I started to sell a DIY product um, using paper and people to make those polyhedra. Um, so that's that's the latest and we did installation for paper company in Jeff Smith um, in London. And but that's the later thing. But yeah, I think um, I do more. Uh, I did more in furniture and uh, sort of physical products in, in the past. Yeah, that is a selection of projects. Some British client, um, Italian client, Japanese client, that, that solar charge lamp is in porcelain, and that was for Japanese client. Wow. Furniture uh, um, is often for Italian or British. That um, left hand um, corner black linear sort of bow chair, yes, that's the one I designed for Arco. The British company about five years ago and the one on the right um, with three them yeah three three d formed plywood with a solid wood that, that that those are for my Swiss client oh, yeah I really like those they're very much my style 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. There was a revival of uh, Swiss sort of traditional chair making. They, they had those um, solid wood chair with um, sort of inside the legs onto the seat at, together with a bit of structure and um, for sort of um, ski hut, hütte type of things. And then that was a kind of contemporary interpretation of that together with the latest technology of this three 3D form of the um, plywood with variety of thickness, the thick in the middle, in the center to support your weight and then make your form. And the outer rim is quite thin to have flexible movement. Oh, nice. Um, how, how long do these projects typically take for you? Are you are they kind of year long or in development or? Really depending on the um, project and then the company. The, the R cool one, I think we took three years, something like that. But um, quicker one is quicker. But yeah, the Swiss company, Rothschild Burger, we had a lot of tests and then prototypes of the um, formed veneer from the plywood so that took quite a long time too it's as really up, yeah up to the nature of lunch sometimes it's very short mm -hmm. mm. And, um, i remember yeah. i've actually got one of these um mini chairs of yours i've got the Do zig you? yeah the zigzag yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. that um, is yes An another sort of um, fear that love of in paper that um, I just yeah wanted to sort of share this model making joy with other people so I started to make a um, series and then started to sell tiny DIY kit. Oh it's such a lovely idea. Um, it's, so do those miniature models kind of come from your development? Um, is that typically how you kind of explore an idea through those miniatures? Um, at early stage, yes, yeah, in in different scales, sometimes one to ten. That model is one to sixteen, which is yeah smaller than how we normally develop. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to more three dimensional sort of realistic models, but yeah, still using paper often or tiny bit of foam, yeah. And yeah, in chair development, we use lots, we make lots of one to fifth um, scale model to check the balance. And then we make a one to one uh, paper models normally to check the, the, the scale, feeling of the scale, which you don't get it on three dimensional models. But I don't have my own wood workshop, so we make it in paper. And then sometimes um, we, we stack up lots of books and then try to sit on them. <laughs> nice, <laughs> very DIY, I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, how, how much of the making do you um, want to involve in your process? Like how attached, you are, how attached are you to that process of, you know, getting hands on? Making. Um, I don't make the final products. I, um, I would uh, people uh, with facilities and skills to make the products and then sell them. But to get ideas, I normally use uh, my hands, our hands a lot. Um, but then, yes, in the process of uh, design, we use three dimensional modeling on the computer, but we um, we, every time we want to see it in real fast before sending data out to my clients. So making is, is really um, heavily sort of involved. I, I'll show you one model. <laughs> at, at home, I, I, I don't have much, but only one I just saw. Oh yes, it's on the shelf. So this is one to fifth um, model of a chair which I designed many years ago. Like, 13 years ago for my Italian client. For example, this, if um, 
I like the balance, then I blow up into one to one. But in this scale, I can check how they stack, and then I make one to ten pass, uh, one to five pass on right next to it, and then see the balance. So this is um, form paper, two two layers of form paper, but then you um, file off with uh, some paper, and here. Uh, sim similar to plywood technique that we cut the shape and then and then glue two together to form the shape so we can recreate quite realistic um, figure out of paper models using three-dimensional models uh, template we print out the stretched out template of the model and then cut it and, and then glue together. So making is, is always really important. So that's why I started to do this uh, paper um, DIY kit of the geometry called the geometrists. Uh, to, I, I just wanted to revive people to use their hands again, not just sort of swiping, <laughs> scrolling the tablets or iPhone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you know um, Natalie de, uh, de Laval's work. She does a lot of paper scale models as well. Um, and yeah. like, they're so like, well, obviously you're a professional, so you're going to do a good job of it. But like, it, it is amazing, like the finish you can get from just a paper model, like how real. And I think to, she actually photographs hers um, rather than doing like a 3D render because you know if you photograph it well it can look quite realistic so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um i think um as a designer i think um you have to have this feeling that you can't rely on the three-dimensional models on, on, the, on the screen you really want to touch and then something like chair you have to test but yeah in this modern life you have to send the data to your client so um, that's why we go parallel. But yeah, checking with with real scale is, is really important. And you start to develop that scale up um, to, to shrink yourself into the scale very easily. To, to design um, interior, interior or space, I use one to 20 feet model. So I'm, I'm sort of this size, kind of, yes. Um, okay. uh, pointing finger it's me and then so you walk into it um yeah uh, for me more checking the facts and feeling myself than presenting it and from um your studies so you yeah you said, explained that you did architecture first and actually I interviewed someone else earlier this week who took the same kind of route went through architecture to arrive at furniture um mm. so it sounds like it's quite a common kind of direction people travel in um and then you ended up at uh oh, what's it called the John Makepeace College it's, I'm trying to think uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, German Business College, what was that? Uh, not, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, in, in Devon, Devon, yeah, that's where Konstantin Gurdjieff studied that. Yeah, I think, to, 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 sorry? Hmm? Uh, Konstantin Gurdjieff, a German furniture designer. Yeah, I, I did a workshop at uh, John Maxfield Pieces College a few times, um, but not uh, deeply involved in. So, uh, so am I mistaken that you didn't study there? Um, no, I didn't. No. No. So mm -hmm. when you say you did a workshop, you were actually delivering the workshop? or At the, uh, yeah, um, I was a tutor for the project, they, those, the students at that college. Um, yeah, I sort of gave conceptual uh, practitioner's point of view to those people who was learning how to make things. The facility is fantastic. I really enjoyed. Mm. Uh, mm. I, I went to, because he, he recently wrote a book about it and I went to the talk and I think I remember your name coming up on the slides and um, 
I obviously just misunderstood. I thought you'd studied there, but no, no, even no. better, but you were teaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did um, the, the workshop twice, maybe. Sort of, I visited first, give the briefing, and then went back again for the process check, and then attended at the uh, presentation, that kind of way of, yeah, involved in the, in the, in the project. Um, I've just Googled it because I couldn't remember the name and it's Parnum, that's it. Parnum, of course. Parnum. It's cute to go then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you, did you study at the RCA? Is that where yeah. you did your... And um, do you, are you still in touch with your, the, the cohort that you studied with? Are, they, are you still sort of in touch with them? Yeah, yeah but, not all of, of them, obviously, but some are still very active uh, practitioner or some of them are teaching. One of them is Ineka Hans, who's a Dutch designer who's now teaching in Berlin. And she um, has just opened her solo exhibition on furniture design and also social design in, in the museum in, in Netherlands. Um, yeah, I'm, I still have contacts to those, uh, a few of them. Um, I'm just looking up her work so I can share it because yeah. I, I haven't heard of her before. Um, Ineka Hans. Ineka Hans, yeah. So this is just a Google image search of her work. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's Ineka there. It's really cool. Is that her there? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, one of my uh, um, paper chair series, the last one is her, her um, piece which is, if you scroll down a tiny bit, we are, she, used, she was involved in um, recycled materials and then also how to revive local industry in the Netherlands uh, quite early on. So she started to, to get uh, involved in local communities that what designers can, can reflect and then can improve the activities of of um, artisan or environmentally concerned activities. And so one of the products she developed were the, the black series, which were using the 100% um, recycled number of plastic. And yeah, I uh, picked up one of her piece in that material, which is a rocking chair called Share Chairs for my paper um, model collection. Oh, wow. Uh, I love hearing stories like that where there's like lots of little links and everyone's kind of connected because, yeah, it, if you think yeah. about it, it's quite a small industry. Um, it is, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and so did you, studying at the RCA, did you really develop like a, a methodology or a process of working or has that changed much now that you're kind of um, running your own practice? Mm, I think, yeah, um, I think I learned the basic of how to develop um, ideas and concepts um, at that point at the Royal College a lot. Uh, the course was uh, furniture design, which is not there anymore, but there, there was until um, like three years after I graduated. Um, yeah, then sort of, but yeah, very similar to design products now, now at the World College, I guess. How to find your own way of tackling an um, issue, I guess. And also, that was for the first time ever, I did this Western way of education. So I had to find myself because, yeah, the education in Japan is quite different that you, uh, you learn what you are given and then become a kind of knowledgeable of that area. And then you start to develop your own idea after you graduate. But at the Royal College, I was asked every day, who, who are you? What is your strength? What, what can you offer to change this um, project of, to yours kind of way? So yeah, that was a 
cultural shock and then I think that's that's where I made my basics. And not having experienced both types of education um, sort of philosophy which would you say did you think was the right sort of one for you or the one that you think produced the for best results? For me um, being individual um, is very in very important and then suits me to develop so I'm, I'm quite happy that I did that uh, process otherwise I don't know um, yeah it's completely different but it, but I learned a lot how to draw things how to um, do basic things in Japan which helps me um, a lot now so um, yeah both is benefiting me definitely and my experience in um, architectural world in Tokyo um, made me to decide not to stay there so <laughs> I'm happy about the result anyway. Um, and what was it particularly about the architecture world or working in Tokyo that you can, that can you put you off a little bit? Um, Architecture is, if the scale is larger, it's politics and um, yeah, who's got money and you have to satisfy people to pay. Um, that is uh, far away from what you think about. Um, even functionality is not in the priority. So uh, yeah, especially when I was there, which was the really bad, end of bubble economy i guess and how to make things um loud in voice or yeah many many aspects which i didn't like was the main factor to decide the aesthetics and the style of architecture which i thought hmm, i don't know um and then um, i really liked to design small scale uh, something like housing but I saw um, yeah I met lots of very good um, architects who does very sincere jobs for homes and houses or smaller community they don't make money and I I started to, to learn how to do um, environmentally friendly and also low cost architecture, which I, was very much interesting. Then every architect who's involved in are uh, struggling to survive. So I thought, okay, this is a long way, but um, I'm more interested in smaller scale. So why not that I study furniture? That's what I thought. And now that you've, um, how long would you say you've been working in the furniture industry for or the design industry? Um, <laughs> Uh, since my graduation at the Royal College, I started to take part in exhibitions, selling exhibitions, or even I sold um, quite a batch of furniture from my degree show. Um, and a gallery started to take my piece. So if I count, yeah, that year was the beginning, then I'm in this industry for, for how long now? 25 years? Wow. Very impressive. <laughs> and having worked in it for 25 years, what would you say your perception of the furniture industry or experiences of our industry has been? How would you describe it to someone else? Um, it, it is, yeah, um, it's kind of um, grow or, or how, how, do you, how can I explain? Yeah, when I started, um, the economy was not great, but started to recover. So there was a mood of let's support um, young graduates and people who just started the business. And then um, I, I was really lucky to gain those helps and then Cool Britannia campaign came afterwards. And then, so I was introduced to international market of furniture as a British designer with this uh, governmental money featuring Cool Britannia, which was 
quite interesting and then rewarding for me. Um, and then I think um, if you are, uh, yeah, and press, the, the uh, media was, or journalists, writers were very strong supporting this movement as well. So I met lots of people who wrote about me and helped, that helped me a lot. So in a way, yeah, um, lots of magazines and then still uh, Sunday supplements were featuring design, what's happening latest every week. So different types of media from now were kind of all supporting this creative industry. And that, um, I was part of that movement, lots of exhibitions, lots of fundings. Um, in a way, yes, I, was, I started that in a very lucky time. And yeah, this uh, industry itself, I noticed sort of little by little. I, I mean, only through my experience, that I started to realize, okay, furniture industry is quite sort of conservative that um, you, need to, you need to make well to sell, but if you make something new and then well made, it's going to be expensive. So there are some factor of that, how to sell marketing and then how to target, that sort of things comes in. And um, it is, mm, and yeah, not easy one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just being provocative in asking. But um, I think I'm just asking because I, I graduated from Furniture College uh, about two years ago now. And mm -hmm. I'm just going through a bit of a like 20s life crisis. <laughs> um, okay. sort of just mm -hmm. try, trying to work out what bit of the industry I sort of fit into. And I think I could be quite a uh, maybe stubborn or principled person so I think if something doesn't sit well with me I I tend to be like nope don't want to do that so I'm just trying to work out what sits most comfortably with me and I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if like there was ever a point it sounds as if you did go through that process when you were doing architecture and yeah. that's you know but and but it seems as though maybe furniture and design you've kind of found your niche and um but you and you work on quite a variety of projects so um is is that like a, a what am i trying to say just like you by working on a variety of projects you can kind of choose the bits that you enjoy the most and kind of move your practice to suit suit that is that fair um, yeah I, I guess so um i just uh it, it's quite interestingly those for example um, jewelry brands um, started to make a, a kind of series with furniture designer, for example. There, there are lots of uh, movement of cross-disciplinary, would you say? Yeah, I took part in an ex exhibition by um, British Council on Fashion, for example. Then I made a really sparky sort of um, not practical dress and then that was really loved by some curator and so that sort of exchange um, I just didn't want to miss anything and then took everything um, so and then that's really led little by little of to, to extend the field um, maybe because um, I'm not um, in my workshop making things myself but i'm more sort of um, visiting work front talk a lot and then ask questions to find out what i can do to this particular project or particular company so my my standing position is, is not from making I, I put quite big weight on using my own hands but that is um a tool to device to to generate my ideas and and visualizing things but my, my core function is to listen to and then find out what is i can contribute what's the best way that i can stay 
the current condition of this company or that, that sort of, yes, depending on the, the project, but that's what I'm always thinking about. Mm. And when you were starting out, what kind of job, uh, am I right in thinking when you finished at the RCA, you set up on your own straight away or did you, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I had uh, my ex-husband and then we, he is a product designer and graduated with garage a year before me. And so product designer and then furniture designer with background of um, architecture. So we kind of brought our expertise and then started our own practice. Yeah. And yeah, we took part in exhibitions like 100% uh, design. At the moment, it's grown to a very commercial um, furniture fair, but it was more or, or less yeah, similar to design junction kind of thing of current uh, events to support uh, young designers to find their clients. So we made a small booth filled up with prototypes to, to show and then talk with the people from real industry. So my first briefed project came through those occasions that I show my ideas and prototypes and then started to talk with furniture manufacturers such as Habitat or Hitchvillers. Those people started to give me brief. And then um, that was the beginning of, the, of, of my design uh, consultant career. But at the same time, to support my life, I made a batch production of furniture or porcelain products or lightings and then sold to design selection galleries, so, sort of, how do you call it? Yeah, select shop, which it isn't, uh, uh, there aren't many remained now. There were quite a few. A bit like, yes, Mint in Rompton uh, Design District. There is a gallery who sort of shows designers' objects. Um, there are a few like that in, in London. Mm. And is mm. most of your work based in London? Um, or do you, I don't know, have you done, are you selling work in other? Are you more international as well, or mostly um, At the beginning, it was um, London galleries who picked up and then sell, but uh, together with the press uh, in relation to those galleries, it's just spread all over. So my clients are very international. Yeah, from early on, I started to work with Japanese clients, a uh, French manufacturer, and lots of Italian furniture industries and Swiss company came in and yeah, German uh, furniture manufacturer as well. So I, yeah, I visited lots of lots of factories. <laughs> yeah, I, that's something I am so impressed by with other designers when they can kind of work across different mediums or different um, yeah, scales or mm -hmm. um, yeah, just sort of, yeah, just really diverse because I, I think having studied at sort of a fine furniture college and learning in wood mm. I'm, I'm kind of always a bit like oh well how how do you know how to do metal work and like it's a whole different set of rules so yeah you have to yeah you have to visit uh, and then and then see the real things I mean the, the making front you have to learn a lot but it's it's always quite interesting and then people are welcoming fresh view um, in a way, um, looking at the making um, reality from outsider's view and then find out something slightly different from people from inside. I think people who's interested in that kind of um, input would, upon me, I guess, also from my background of um, Far East, to some people want to see new market, for example. They want to sell it to uh, Japan or China or South Korea or those or, or many other new countries who are uh, very keen to get contemporary design. And they want to sort of have interpreter sometime. 
Do you yeah, think that, well, the, chair that you, the chair that you designed with Urkel, do you think that was, was that the purpose of that collaboration? Yeah, so. thing? yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, they were uh, exploring the new market and then they needed to know uh, this, for example, size is different, uh, chair size is different from Western way of living to uh, Japanese way of living or, or Chinese um, want larger furniture by now, but I, I, I'm kind of introduced that what um, kind of what they have can modify and then produce something to fit, to export, and then also, yeah, appealing to different environments. At once, yeah, in one time, I was working for Italian client who struggled to export things outside from Italy. I became a, a knockdown, a knockdown specialist or flat pack specialist, which makes um, reaching distance a lot more. So I wanted to sort of use those stacking knowledge, flat pack knowledge um, to be used by other different type of clients as well. So for, for our core furniture, that um, was my own brief was that the dining chair has to be stackable. And that, that's why you can fill a container with a lot lots more furniture to export. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, not to be learned, to be used in um, normal lives. So, yes, many, many um, aspects, I think, were the key to be invited to be a designer. Mm, that's amazing. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd heard um, the anecdote about, um, yeah, exporting to Asia and how the scales had to be adapted. Um, but how did you go about learning, becoming a knockdown specialist or flat pack? Um, how did you right, do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is, um, when I designed a uh, lot of exhibitions for, um, uh, Crafts Council was one of my clients, or British Council, they had a touring exhibition, curated lots of touring exhibitions, which uh, created one show first, and then, this content, together with the contents and then concept is uh, sold for renting. I mean, what is, yeah, tour exhibition, or, uh, exhibition into different countries or part of this country, or that was a big thing in early 2000, I guess. Um, and then, for example, when I designed an exhibition of lots of uh, British potters, porcelain or earthenware or, or ceramic pot potters. I designed um, exhibition stand, uh, banners, those uh, graphics, how the rooms are divided and then everything has to be packed in a box and then moved to the next together with the exhibits. So that sort of um, exercise I did a, a few times and you have to make, uh, you know, produce um, instructions as well, how to assemble this, how the curators, not the specialist of buildings can, can um, Put make, it together. Rebuild the, yeah, the, rebuild the exhibition in the next place in, in short amount of time. So I examined a lot of IKEA instructions and other instructions and to, to improve my, my ability to tell how to, put things back. But yeah, that is a um, good exercise for me. Um, you can do a lot. <laughs> and also, um, at the same time, you start to think not to waste materials. And then that could help all of my clients to, to run their production too. So in a way, I sometimes measure the facility and then get the measurement of the materials they buy in the common material size and things like that, and then work together with the manufacturer, how not to make waste. Mm. That's, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. So you've been like exhibited and you are also are the exhibition designer. You've kind of been on both sides of that yeah. process. Yeah. 
and how much would you say um what's the kind of uh proportion of like because some of your work if it's being shown in galleries and things like arguably it could be viewed as like artwork or kind of art furniture um and, uh, yeah um so like how much would you say like your work's commercial versus um you know kind of i don't know how you describe that just art furniture or um okay yeah um art furniture. or collectible or i yeah. i haven't stepped into that um area much i did tiny bit but i like to work with manufacturers who produce and then sell to people who's using them rather than putting it on on the in the shelf um and yeah it's kind of i don't know it's it's my yeah what i like so i haven't done um limited edition or collectible types yet but in my paper um, sculpture, I'm now thinking that could be interesting to get in that area um, or completely new area of um, education. Um, yeah, that my products to be used by schools and things like that. So that, that's a new area. But as a furniture, I think my main area is um, usable, manufactured um, for real life, but a bit sort of high end of price because um, it's yeah. beautifully designed. That's why, you know. Or, um, yeah, the, the nature of the clients, they're targeting the high end as well. Um, just so I don't forget, you mentioned you designed a dress um, earlier. What? Can I? I just want to look it up on Google. What? Uh, what was the name? Uh, no, that is a bit too old. I haven't even oh, really? put it on my website. Have I? No, I don't think so. No, you don't see. I should shouldn't that. But that was very early on. Even yeah, yeah even when I was still with my um, ex um, partnership, I guess. Yeah, that was um, elastic elastic um, lead and then lots and lots of um, what's that called plastic um, plastic what's that called tubing uh, tubes mm, um, to make bundles um, if to make bundles plastic sort of strip with a ring on the ends all in one and then if you click 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 and then it stops like police use for for arresting people now. oh no, okay yeah. Uh, yeah. oh um yeah and it, yeah what are they called yeah what's that called <laughs> uh snap no um uh, oh zip ties plastic zip ties. Zip ties. yeah 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 so those, yeah you, you can't reverse you have to cut to yeah to make, yeah I used lots of lots of those plastics which I dyed um, using sort of plastic dye method in, in really nice colors and then made a, a sort of, yeah, um, cream of, of the nightclub sort of dress with, with lots of lots of sparks and oh, wow. yeah. And oh, Sounds no, amazing. I'd love to see a photo. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes yes. Yeah, if if you yeah if you come to my studio, I think I have it somewhere. <laughs> oh well, I'm definitely going to take you up on that offer. That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, I think we have about ten more minutes left because I I don't want to okay. take up too much of your time. But um, so just the final sort of two topics. Uh, we're going to approach lockdown and COVID and just. Mm. Uh, you kind of mentioned at the beginning it's sort of you're now working from home for a bit like how has it affected your day-to-day -day job and like has your business kind of suffered from it at all or like are you taking things in a new direction like how what's your response to the situation okay um it um suffers i mean it, it affects my business definitely that um sort of lots of talk i had to do new projects were come down immediately after the lockdown and then um, 
and then I have to sort of ask my staff to reduce the time. Otherwise, I don't know how long it goes on to until I get a project which uh, pays me the project fee. Um, but at the same time, uh, some going on project, I have more time to think about it, how to um, promote, how to, for example, um, we have done um, product design on spectacles, glasses last year and then launch it was or ought to be maybe now or last month but it's postponed because the production had to stop and then but it's launched this or all, all done and then for yeah we i have more time to to talk with my clients and then discuss how to make these um promotional images and then um, that was that's kind of very good that um, normally it goes really quickly but I have more time and then also um, I had um, more time to make things with my own hands but I don't have big facilities so I, I made lots of paper um, polyhedra and then I'm kind of thinking about this how to have this in um, educational section to to encourage uh, young people to make and then realize of the beauty of classical shapes and things like that. Mm. So yeah, in a way, yes, um, I have um, a lot more visual materials to use to talk about this um, math visualized mathematics and structural engineer world. Um, in yes, kind of good and bad, and you know, I think it's it's all, um, same to all. I at the beginning I had to learn um, because um, it's me to make my polyhedra, so I had to do Instagram myself. Uh, normally, I, I I had my assistants to to post those things, but I had to. I had to buy a new phone first <laughs> to <laughs> learn <laughs> how to uh, put the Instagram up myself. And yeah, in, in a way, yes, it, this made me to think about uh, how I should catch up. I didn't know how to use Illustrator, the software, for example. So my first month was being um, having tutorial of my assistant uh, to to learn. Okay, um, that was the easy bit. But I have to learn many things like um, movie editing software on on the phone, which I really don't like still. Now. <laughs> but I became more flexible in, in those things that, okay, how to search if I don't have idea of what to do kind of thing. I, um, in a way, yes, um, I'm, I caught up a bit of this ID world, which I was stepping out um, with my team before. I think um, that's the new dimension, I guess. When you talked about your assistant showing you the software, was that for, what software was that for? Sorry, I missed that. Uh, Illustrator. Uh, wait, Illustrator. say it again. Hmm? Illustrator. 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 Mm. Okay, or, what's that? Or InDesign or those visual, yeah, yeah, similar to InDesign. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Photoshop and things like that to, to prepare your presentation. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a massive learning curve then. <laughs> yeah, it was, yes. I've never done it myself. So I was always having IT with us. My assistants can do it much better, quicker than me. So I was just, just making sketch and then giving it to assistants. But now, yeah, um, I have to do it myself, which is um, some, some parts. I'm still um, relying on lots of parts of, to my assistants. but. I think um, I started to prepare that how um, the future um, sort of um, if I'm, I'm not keeping studio um, community then how I can manage project 
with lots of um, talented young people who can help me remotely. Yeah. How have you managed that then through video calls and things? Or? Um, yeah, and then yeah, sharing screens um, and chat. Yeah, over video. Yes, so mm. Zoom was. Uh, I didn't use Zoom before. Did you before the lockdown? <laughs> you familiar with this? No, I'd never heard of it before. So I've learned a lot about technology recently as well <laughs> yeah yeah At the beginning of lockdown i was really kind of screaming no not anymore new downloads please and teams and slack and doc, uh, google docs and then everything but now i i notice how useful they are so i'm, I'm using it but it took a bit of time mm. Mm. um so my then, then, then I missed to, to see the real things now, which is, I think, uh, I, let me know this. I mean, this situation um, let me realize that touching real materials and then talking with real people is so precious and important. I don't sort of waste time uh, if I can do it again. Mm. I think, um, so what, a lot of what you've said kind of leads on to my final question about mm -hmm kind of ed where you mentioned about education and how you've used some of the time to kind of reflect on how what you you're doing could be uh, applied to educating young people um because mm. I think in some I'd be interested to kind of have more conversations with you about that because that's kind of what I'm hoping this girl makes might address um mm. as well as addressing lots of other things about the industry but yeah in your view like what should the future of this girl makes be and like what do you feel like our community sort of needs um from your perspective yeah. mm, you mean our community of designers who is using their hands is that what you your question is um yeah i think or when design I... industry sort of broader field. Um, when i say community i sort of mean like uh women who are working yeah working with their hands in design um mm -hmm. well not just women but that's kind of who i'm trying to bring together just to create a sense of like a network basically mm. um yes i think um more and more that we have to talk about um how to use your hands um yeah, in, in this situation that we got used to IT and then the screens, but still, I think you have to, what you're missing is the real um, sense of touching, using, and then a real mm, process of, yeah, seeing the process of something is made, I guess. Um, I think, um, over this lockdown, lots of people started to cook and then lots of people started to sow some seeds and then start to grow their veggies. Um, I think um, maybe what we can, we can say is that um, those are good too, but use your hands and then you can generate different sort of creativity as well. Mm. Yeah, I think we can learn a lot what happened over the lockdown, what the, the um, cooking YouTubers did or gardening communities started to exchange or I don't know. Um, we like to be alone and then make things, but maybe we need to share it. Because you, mm, what, yeah, the number of objects you can make is limited. But how to show that the joy of making is a different sort of, yeah, way of communicating it, communicating the creativity, I think. Mm. No, but it's not easy because you can't touch it. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm sort of just letting that sink in because um, I've got... I had an idea and what you've just said just sort of 
watering those seeds a little bit so um yeah okay uh, and the reason I ask everybody that I'm interviewing that question is just to hear like everybody's input and to see if anyone had any ideas that I hadn't thought of um but yeah I think you're right in that just yeah everyone sharing what they're doing and but trying to do so in a way that's not putting pressure on people to be productive but to show like how much enjoyment you can have from it and mm -hmm. yes this this um what yes what you can gain i think the cooking is easy that you can imagine how tasty that could be and then on the on this online world that if you don't make it very tasty you 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 don't need to show that you just smile and then say tasty or, or you, you see the, the growing uh, veggie is a very personal joy to see something is growing in front of you and that could be shared what we can share um, between this this um designers community is a bit different because the joy you gain is for example if you complete a chair then every day when you sit on it and then you feel oh yes i love it but it's very difficult to to take that to other people or what you are um, stimulated by using your hands is really there until something comes to be shared easily it then that, that feeling is not as easy as taste or bite of your crop and harvest cucumber eating and you know different type of thing i think we have to find out what is that what sparks sort of the the yeah the moment of things yeah yeah it's gonna i think um we're, we're going to sort of move forward with uh yeah. can, can i show you my share yeah yeah absolutely and then, oh lovely <laughs> so I'm, I'm using it every day I, I then i i like it more and more oh but but okay but then i'm using different uh, chair <laughs> for my computer <laughs> <laughs> but yes, th this is, um, it, it's, it wasn't seen here, but um, I don't know, it, this is a um, kitchen sort of um, setting, you can share the smell immediately, and then the sound of flying, for example, but the object is the time you use and then you like to do it with time. We have to, yeah, think of how to share it. Um, I mean, how to visualize it, or I don't know. Mm. So, so the more that you see that chair every day, the more you learn to love it. And is that what you're saying? I, I need to use it, not oh. just seeing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the point of design that's uh, not easy to communicate. Mm, yeah, the actual tactile kind of mm, real yeah. experience. Yeah, then experience with time as well, time scale. Mm. Yeah, well, I think um, the I think this has been really lovely to have this chat because the whole point of this series was I was locked down at home and just feeling a bit like not that involved in design and making anymore so mm -hmm. I think having spoken to you my brain is like full of all these ideas and um yeah just I just feel really excited about actually what you've just been talking about getting sort of stuck in and making something again um yeah. for me too um it's nice to to know that a young um designer with a creative mind still wants to, to do with wood and with your hands and then making things. I, but yes, I think you really need to see, you need to think who's your real um, audience, who's your real, um, what kind of society you can appeal to, I guess. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, and do you have anything else you'd like to say before we sort of sign off? Any other last um, Let's make 
Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really great um, <laughs> statement to finish on. So. Yeah, not to start. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, I'll sign off now. So thanks very much, Tomoko. Really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Happy. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.